What's going on YouTube? It's Chris from Out West with Chris and today I am here to chat with you about the channel a little bit and then also do a little Q&A. A A few weeks ago I did a, a little video where I was just drinking coffee and chatting and I asked you for your questions. So today I'm going to answer those questions. Thank you to everybody who sent a question in. I really appreciate it. If you hadn't, I would have been talking to myself, answering my own questions or something. I don't know. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed. I say it a lot, I think. I don't know if I say it enough, but you guys are awesome. Um, you are the reason why I keep putting videos out. Um, when you subscribe and like and comment, that type of thing, it, it gives me, I guess, uh, motivation to keep putting content out. And I'm trying to put good content out. I want to interact with you, build community, give you guys good information, or entertain you. That's my goal. When I first started this channel, you know, I didn't really think that it would get to be where it is and that I would be doing some of the things that I am. My whole goal when I started the channel was to inspire people to get outdoors, to interact with nature, to go hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, just exploring nature. And if I have inspired anybody to do that, then in my opinion, this channel has been successful. So recently I've kind of gotten into gear and looking at gear, getting subscription boxes, reviewing gear, that type of stuff. And if I've helped you, you know, make a decision about gear to get, then I also consider the channel a success for that reason. Recently I put out two videos on Alpha Outpost. Um, it was a two-parter, it was a really long video, so I broke it into two sections. For those of you who saw it and left feedback, I really appreciate the feedback. One more thing about the channel. Recently we hit 2,000 subscribers. We're sitting at 2,025 right now, something like that. And that's all you guys, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. You guys are, are great. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You guys are the best. Kind of in a way, I'm not doing a giveaway right now to celebrate that, but to celebrate that and to kind of get into the Christmas spirit, we'll be doing several giveaways in December. So make sure you're watching videos. Um, at the end of the videos, I'll be you know giving stuff away. Our first question today comes from Twitter. It comes from a user named Arg. I actually know Arg in real life. He could have just called me. But anyways, um, this is for Arg. And if you want to follow Arg, he's a pretty cool dude. Um, you can follow him on Twitter. His handle or whatever is at ArgPC. So at A-A-R-G-G-P-C. And yeah, he's a pretty cool dude, so you, you know, follow him. And if you wanna follow me on Twitter, it's at OutWestWChris. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. His question was, how do you determine what line, lure, or bait to use on your different fishing adventures? And that's a really tough question because every fish species is gonna be different. So I guess that's kind of where you start. If you're gonna be fishing for trout, you know, you need certain lures and certain line for, for the trout. When you're fishing for bass, you use something totally different. And it's also kind of season specific. One thing that you wanna do is you want to figure out what the fish are eating and you wanna mimic it. So right now there's a ton of bait fish where I fish, just schooling up and stuff. And so the stripers and even some of the bass um, are going after bait fish. So that's a good option. Basically, you wanna mimic what the fish actually can eat wherever you're going fishing and whatever species you're going after. It's a huge thing for fly fishermen to match the hatch, basically. So if you're fly fishing, you want to you know, match what is available for the fish. If there's a particular insect that's hatching or you know, a nymph that's in the water. One of the best ways to learn that, especially if you're just starting out fishing or you're fishing a new area, is to fish with somebody who knows their stuff, who's fished it before. And that was key for me when I went up to Oregon and fished the Williamson River. I fished with a guy named Dean, and Dean knew that river like the back of his hand, and he knew exactly what I needed to use to catch the fish. He told me before I, I went up, hey, you need to buy some of these. You know, he told me the, the lure I needed to get. Even getting a guide, have, hiring a guide for your first time out on a new body of water, it's not a bad thing. You know, getting to know what the guide uses, 
can clue you in on how to catch fish on your own going forward. Choosing the right line is kind of, it's along the same lines. You need to decide based on the species of fish that you're going after and how those fish act in the body of water that you are fishing. I fish an area in the California Delta for, for bass and these fish, you know, they're not spooked by line and it's dirty water typically, not very great visibility. So I use a lot of braid and I use a 65 pound braid because I'm fishing in the middle of stuff and I don't want, you know, fish to go behind a snag or into a, a mat or under, you know, into some toolies and have my line break off as I'm trying to yank them out. So that's one consideration. That, that same braided line though wouldn't work if I was fishing for some of the delta tributaries for salmon. The salmon would spook because of that braided line. So for trout though, you want to have a line that's not gonna spook the trout. And that's true for a lot of fish and even for bass in some fisheries, if the water's really clear, um, a braided line and even a thick monofilament line can spook the fish. Typically a good rule of thumb is trout in general and fish in really clear water, you wanna use a monofilament or fluorocarbon line and you wanna have the smallest diameter, so the smallest test that you can get away with without worrying about breaking your line or breaking a fish off. For bass, if you're in muddy water, you can get away with braid or thicker lines like a 12 pound monofilament, um, something like that. If you're gonna be punching mats, doing anything like that, I highly recommend that you're doing it with braided line. That's about it. We could talk about this for hours really um, because every fish is different and every fishery is different. So the next question kind of along the same line was what's your favorite gear to use for fishing? And that's a really broad question too. I have a, a couple of favorite rods and reels. I have some favorite lures and it all depends on what I'm going after or what time of year I'm going after. So we'll start with some of the lures. Um, I like buzz baits when I'm going after bass and I'm gonna kind of stick to bass right now because that's mostly what I've been fishing for. But for bass, buzz baits are cool. And this particular buzz bait, you wouldn't think that it would catch a lot of fish. It's a double buzz bait. But this thing has caught me a ton of fish. I don't know what it is about this double buzz bait. Buzz baits are a good bait to use, in my opinion, when you're trying to cover a lot of ground, especially during pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn, when the fish are you know pretty aggressive. Uh, it's a great way to cover a lot of ground, and with those aggressive fish, they just they just want to kill it. Not to mention, it's super fun to fish a buzz bait or any top water bait for that matter because the action, I mean, you just see it. When they swirl or strike at um, your buzz bait or your whopper plopper or your frog, it's super fun. And yeah, I just love it. I love top water fishing for bass. One of my other favorite baits, this is actually one that I kind of made. I, couldn't find a, a red one. I did a little video about this. These are um, Ish Monroe spinner baits, and I like it because they have the double Colorado blade. Sometimes you have the willow leaf blades. Sometimes you have a Colorado blade with a willow leaf blade. I like these because you can go really slow with them with the Colorado blades and still get the blades to spin. And so the double Colorado is my preferred spinner, spinner bait just because you can fish it really slow. One of my other favorite baits for pitching are these, these KVDs. And this is a purple one. Um, I haven't even opened this one. It's a June bug color. But these are from KVD. They're coffee scented game hog let me open it up so they're like a brush hog basically um like i said this one's purple i haven't really used this color before but more of your natural colors is what i would tend towards your kind of greens and that type of stuff but i like those and, and i'll uh, rig it up with like a a 1 8 ounce uh, tungsten bullet weight on the front of it peg that down and you know, just pitch that into toolies or around cover and just walk it around in there and, you know, catch a lot of fish that way. As far as like the actual like fishing rods and reels, 
This is my favorite spinning reel. And this is the Pin Battle 2. It's the 3000. Um, so the 3000 just kind of signifies the capacity um, for the line, so the size of it. And this is a, a great reel. This reel is pretty dang awesome. Um, I use it for trout fishing and I use it for bass. It works pretty dang good. Um, one thing that I like about it is it's super durable. Uh, you can see the the bell wire here is really thick. And that's one thing that's important to me is something that's durable. When you fish in a kayak, which that's primarily how I fish, you want um, gear that's you know pretty durable because you you're, it's getting beat up. For bay casters, I have this Shimano Casitas, and this is a, a really nice bay casting reel um, that I like. It's a 7-2 gear ratio. Um, I like this this quite a bit and there you see I've got this uh, with the 65 pound braid. This is on my favorite uh, bass fishing rod right now. It's a Dobbins flipping stick. This is my um, rod for punching and flipping but I use this for a lot of other applications too. Um, it's a medium heavy fast action rod, um, 7 foot 6 and I like it quite a bit. I like the Casitas quite a bit too. Uh, it's been pretty durable. Yeah, I like this. I like this rod quite a bit. And I would highly recommend Dobbins rods in general. Um, th their rods are really pretty decent quality and you know they don't break the bank. So Derek, thanks for the question. I hope it answers it. So another question from YouTube. This is from Johnny3210101. He asks, Final thoughts on Alpha Outpost? Question mark. How did the wilderness box work out? I thought the wilderness box was a pretty decent box and I got a lot of use out of one of the items, um, the Wooby. I got a lot of use out of that when I went elk hunting. And it's a, it's a quality item. My final thoughts on Alpha Outpost. It's kind of hard to really nail down a final thought because they've had two okay boxes. I have no idea where this company is gonna go as far as direction but I don't think it's gonna be great. It'll be interesting to see how they do going forward. It's interesting to see how they do with this whole Prepper Gearbox merger type thing. I've already got some really bad feedback from Prepper Gearbox subscribers that just are not happy about this situation at all. My final thought, I guess, is I'm canceling my subscription, so I guess that should say it all. So moving on, um, Skater Dan asks, how do you get a thousand subscribers on YouTube? And Skater Dan has a small little channel that he's kind of getting going. You know, that's a tough question and, and you could talk about that topic for quite some time. A couple of tips would be put out good content. So take your time. If you don't think it's good content, then don't even upload it. Um, I've had a few videos that I've uploaded that I look back and I'm like, ah, Geez, why did I even put that out there? If you put good content out on a regular basis, people will subscribe to your channel. That's the real nuts and bolts of it. I mean, that's it, really. You put good content out that people are interested in, and as long as they can find you, they will subscribe. So just put out good content. That's the key. So thanks for the question, Skater Dan. I hope that helps out. So the next question comes from Chappie, and Chappie is a, a cool dude. He's uh, somebody I interact with on the BattleBox forums quite a bit. Chappie asks, what do you do with the gear that you get that you either don't like or don't have a need for, or you don't use, or you don't destroy with an ax? So for that gear, some of the gear, I mean, honestly, there's been some stuff from Alpha Outpost that I've either like given to my kids, like not like knives and stuff like that, but there was like a, a paracord bracelet that was in one of their boxes with a little compass on it. I gave it to my son. My son loves it. There's been some items I've thrown away. Um, there are some Alpha Outpost items that I have, t you know, tucked away in case of a shit hits fan scenario where I've thought, okay, well I could see some use for this. I've also given stuff to friends and family. My little sister didn't have a good pocket folder um, so I gave her one of my pocket folders from a battle box. Uh, it was a knife that I liked quite a bit, but she just didn't have one, so I saw a need. And you know, I have plenty of pocket folders. So I asked her if she was interested and I gave it to her. 
Um, I've given my brother-in-law a few items before. And yeah, one thing that I want to do and then I'm going to do this December in some of these giveaways is I'm going to give away um, a few things from some of my subscription boxes. So stay tuned for that. So I hope that answers your question, Chappie. Another question from the Battlebox forums was from Chance Favors, and Chance Favors asked, what is the speed of an unladen swallow? And I can answer that in a few ways. Um, one answer is actually answering with a question, African or European, and that's obviously from a Monty Python um, quest for the Holy Grail movie or whatever, or I can answer it with an actual answer. The uh, speed of an unladen swallow is 31 to 40 miles an hour. Google, baby, Google. So moving on, Jacob M. sent in the question, out of all of the gear you've got from Battlebox, Hunter's Hall, Hunt Vault, and Alpha Outpost, what is your favorite? And oh my gosh, this was a tough question. I've gotten a ton of gear over the past year from Battlebox and a few of those other subscription boxes as well that I've really liked. I've, I've really liked a lot of the gear. I guess I can kind of just go through some of the stuff that I've liked and then tell you my favorite. One of the things that I liked was actually from Alpha Outpost and it was the Wooby. We talked about it a little bit earlier and I've talked about it before. This is a poncho liner and this is, this is great. I, I really like this poncho liner. It's probably, it is the best item that I have got from Alpha Outpost. So here are a few items that I really like. This is the from the Pathfinder School or Pathfinder. This is their, I forget what they called it, but it's a little container for liquids and a little cup to heat up liquids and stuff like that. Um, you know, you could use this if you're out backpacking or camping, um, something like that. And I really like this kit. Um, it has a nice lid for the, the cup. I like this kit a lot. I have not used it much, but I really, really like how it's made, how it nests. The list is huge, uh, especially from Battlebox, of items that I've got that I really do like. And I really like like the Zombie Tinder, Jelly Gen Cotton Fire Starters. Those were cool. The Pathfinder Infernos are really nice uh, for fire starters. I mean, we've gotten a lot of awesome stuff. I've also gotten a lot of knives that I really like. And one knife that I use a lot um, is the Fox ALSR. This is a really cool knife. I like this knife a lot. I also really like this knife, and this is the Buck. This came in the hunting box. I can't even remember which one, but this is the Buck. It's a little skinning knife. It's just a, a beautiful knife. Comes in a pretty decent sheath. And then an item that I use quite a bit, and I like as well, is the, the SOG Power Play. And for a multi-tool, this is a great little multi-tool. Tons of useful stuff in it. And it just feels so buttery smooth. Just the opening and closing action on it. Um, really good, responsive multi-tool. And I use this around the house and in the garage. I'm working on projects quite a bit. Um, some days, instead of carrying a knife, I actually carry this, and I carry it in the, the hard sheath that um, that I picked up aftermarket from SOG. Um, this is a pretty cool little way to carry it. You can buy these online at the Battlebox store, and they've got them in other places too, but um, pretty cool little hard sheath. I like this multi-tool quite a bit. And then there's the items like um, the Wicked Tree Gear Tree Saw, I, I like that handsaw. That's a great handsaw. The Saberback Bowie from Outdoor Edge I really liked, and I really liked the, the Razor Light knives, the EDC Razor Light knives from Outdoor Edge that were in a, a box a while back. Tons of great stuff in these boxes. My favorite item, though, that I've ever received in a battle box came in a Pro Plus, and it's the Gerber LMF2. And I... You know, a year ago, I would have never expected to say that a Gerber item was my favorite, but this is a great knife. It's, you know, made in the USA, in Portland, Oregon. Um, just a really, really good knife. If you guys haven't heard of the Gerber LMF2, 
you need to Google it. And if you don't have one, I mean, you need to check out this knife. It is a great freaking knife. I do carry it on my person. Um, I've used the, the leg straps before. They work okay. Uh, a lot of times I'll actually take this and attach it to my, my pack, my 511 Rush 12, and I'll attach it using um, the Molly with these, and I just attach it right onto the backpack. And the sheath is great. There's a sharpener built into the sheath. It's just an all around really good knife. And I know there are other more expensive blades out there, but I really like this knife. I'm actually gonna put a link down in the description so you can take a look at it. It's an Amazon link. Um, take a look at it. If, if you think it would make a good Christmas present for yourself, then freaking pick it up, man. It's a good knife. Spencer P asked the question, why don't you subscribe to the soft rep crate? Have you ever thought about it? And I have thought about subscribing to the soft rep crate. When I first heard about it, it was last year about this time that I started hearing about this crate. Maybe it was December or January, but at that time they were doing a quarterly crate. It was 399 bucks, um, which just seemed outrageous. And from what I could tell, it just seemed like a little too much to, to put into something without really knowing what you're gonna get back. Since then, they've come out with their mini crate and their mini crate's like 20 bucks a month, something like that. And I have thought about subscribing to it. I did some research and I will not subscribe to that. And SoftRep is a website that I think is a pretty cool website. Like I subscribe to their Facebook feed and I read their articles, um, the ones that don't, um, you don't need the exclusive access for or whatever. But they have great articles, great people over there that run the website portion of things. I've seen some reviews and unboxings of their boxes and it doesn't really look that impressive. You get a lot of kind of swag, like some stickers and you know stuff like that. But as, act as far as actual gear goes, I don't really see anything that special. Nothing really makes me want to go out and purchase that box. So the next question comes from Brandon M. And Brandon was wondering about tents. And he asked, what would you recommend for a tent for two people to fit comfortably? And tents are tricky. Tents are tricky in how they word and advertise. Basically, if a tent says a four person tent, you can fit two people. And even with two people, you're gonna be a little bit crowded in there. Um, I have a Kodiak canvas tent. It's a 10 by 14 floor plan. I mean, it's huge. It weighs like 100 pounds. It's a huge freaking tent. It's not for backpacking or anything like that. Uh, when we go to elk camp, we put all of our gear in there and we have two cots and it keeps us nice and dry and warm and there's space to move around comfortably. Um, but that's a huge tent. So really it kind of depends on the application. If you're backpacking, you're gonna want something light and you're not as worried about space, right? And if you're car camping, there are some options. There's a Coleman tent that I've reviewed in the past that actually wasn't bad. It was a four person tent. I'll link that video down below. You're not gonna have a ton of room for any gear, but you'll have room for you know the two people and your sleeping bags. You won't have room if you use a cot though. Um, another great tent is the Coleman 98 Octagon. Um, that's a really good tent that I've had some interaction with. My brother-in-law uses that when he goes car camping and two people can easily fit in that tent with a ton of room. And it's a pretty good tent, just in general, it's a good tent to have. So if you're gonna be doing any backpacking, you know, you're less concerned with room and more concerned with how much that thing weighs. <clears throat> and I just asked my brother-in-law what he uses because he really likes his backpacking tent that him and his wife and uh, their little boy will go backpacking quite a bit. And they really like their tent. It's an ultralight tent and it's the Nemo Dagger 2P. It doesn't have a ton of room, but it has two doors with two vestibules that you can store your gear in. So, um, that's an option if you're looking for uh, a decent tent that is light that you can use when you're backpacking. If you're car camping, why not go big? Get a nice big tent where you have a ton of room. Um, 
you know, that way if you want to throw a queen size mattress in there, you've got the room for it. So in that case, uh, the Coleman Montana is a decent tent. Um, the Coleman 98 Octagon is a decent tent for that. The Kodiak Canvas Tent, if you want to spend 600 bucks, is a great tent for that and it'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. Um, so there are a lot of options out there. Just do your homework, you know. Go to a store that has them set up and walk in through them. Sportsman's Warehouse, if you have one of those around you, a lot of times they'll have tents set up that you can go in and check out. Um, but if you're car camping, why not just get a, an eight person tent and then you'll have a ton of room for you and whoever you're camping with and all of your gear. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap up the video today. But before we leave, I have one question for you guys. So answer in the comments down below. What do you guys want to see on the channel? Pretty simple. What kind of videos are you guys interested in? And let me know if it's something that is feasible for me to do, um, I will do it. I have no problem providing content that you guys are interested in seeing. So let me know down in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for all of your support. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. If you like the video, please like it. If you're new to the channel, please take a look around at some of the videos. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. And that's it, folks. Thanks for getting out west with Chris.